Jonathan Jackson now joins me in studio to discuss the future of the real estate industry. Once again, good to have you, sir. Could we talk Thank briefly you, about how the industry has been resilient during the period of COVID-19? What has it been like for you? Well, it, uh, it has not really been that uh, resilient. I think uh, both us and a lot of other developers have had experience of uh, buyers, uh, sales actually slowing down uh, considerably, and also many buyers actually pulling out. And, uh, and it's understandable. Uh, so many people have suffered and uh, have economic problems. Either they've lost their jobs or their businesses have uh, stopped uh, functioning as they, as they usually do. And so a lot of people, we've had at least, uh, at least 10 if not more, uh, uh, buyers who had bought previously to the co uh, Corona COVID uh, situation and who have uh, pulled out of the sales. But having said that, we're also very pleased to say that, you know, that we are under construction, mm -hmm. um, we're actually building, and as a result, we have actually sold considerably more than 10. Uh, we were at the beginning of uh, the COVID period, somewhere around 40, 45. Mm. I'm happy to say now we're up to around 80. Uh, and just this last weekend, we had a, a very good expo at Village Market, and uh, we had nearly 300 uh, interested parties who signed their names and gave us, uh, who were very interested in the product. So uh, we're selling very well at the moment. We're selling between five and eight every month which is uh, uh, really good uh, progress, and we're very pleased. Great. You sort of preempted my other question, which was the confidence in delivery for the client. But let's look at how the industry has been, you know, trying to cushion the client against the adverse effects of COVID-19. Reports came out that uh, a lot, there were quite a lot of cancellations of mortgages and people having to restructure. But how is the industry cushioning the client? Um, there's not much happening. I think developers are helping out a lot by giving buyers longer time to, to repay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's happening very much with the banks. I think some of the banks are being a little bit more uh, understanding and not actually pushing the clients all the way and restructuring their financing. Mm -hmm. um, certainly as developers, we, we are very sympathetic to people's uh, situations and we have restructured some of the uh, uh, payment plans that we had before so that people have longer time to pay. So that's, those are the sort of practical ways in which uh, developers are uh, responding to the COVID period. Great. Let's talk on matters operations. There have been instances where some real estate practitioners are not you know, delivering within the timelines that they uh, you know, stipulated to the client, particularly for the off-plan, uh, you know, operations for the real estate sector. What's your take on that and how is the industry mutating towards, you know, giving value to the client and in time? You're absolutely right, Brian. Uh, what we have uh, found is that because there's been several developments in the last five, eight years, mm -hmm. which uh, were a lot of marketing and public um, publicized and actually didn't proceed or stopped mm -hmm. by just digging a hole. Uh, we had <laughs> quite a similar problem. Um, it was difficult to, to get people to buy into the project when we were just uh, a whole. Um, thankfully, as you know, I have uh, 35 years experience and a very big track record sure. of uh, uh, real estate and development. I've built over 6 million square feet of space. Um, and so we have a very strong track record. And so a lot of people, uh, particularly the diaspora, put a lot of trust into me and they actually were buying the units even before we started the construction. But as you know, uh, just over five months, six months ago, we actually started construction. We've actually, uh, the basement is done and we're now up onto the sixth floor. Mm -hmm. And what is going to be amazing and it's going to be quite uh, interesting for people in Nairobi mm -hmm. is once we get up to the ninth floor, which is where the tower starts, mm -hmm. we'll actually be building one floor every week. Wow, that sounds amazing. Mm. So let me just run it with you. Even before COVID, there was the talk about having affordable housing units in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But 88 condominium, as we know it, is a luxury apartment uh, mm -hmm. unit. Talk to us about that. How is the market warming up towards that? Are you finding a bit of hardship in selling or people are still warming up to the idea of luxur uh, luxury apartments? 
I think, I think what we have found is that there's been a lot of luxury apartments built in the last five to ten years mm -hmm. uh, and good quality in uh, middle level and high level. Mm -hmm. uh, but you will find all of those apartments are in Westlands, Kilimani, mm -hmm. uh, Gigiri, those sort of places where there's already uh, now an oversupply of apartments. Uh, particularly, unfortunately, during this corona period, uh, demand is not so high. I'm sure it will pick up again uh, probably next year. But, uh, for, but even still, even next year, you have a huge amount of competition in those areas because there's such a big supply. <clears throat> what we have found is that in Upper Hill, mm -hmm. land is very expensive. The only way to um, manage that process is to build a, a, a very big project. And that's what we have done. And because Upper Hill, there is no limit in height, uh, so we have gone 44 floors. Yes, you're right. We're actually going to be the tallest high-end residential building in Africa. So we're very iconic. It's wow. a very iconic. And because um, there are 40,000 workers in Upper Hill, mm -hmm. and they have no good accommodation at all. So you've got there the World Bank, the embassies, you've got Britam and lots of other big companies. You've got all the doctors and the lawyers are there. And they all travel many hours every day uh, to work and back again. So having a high-end, good quality uh, product right in the middle, mm -hmm. and it's a condominium. So we actually have a mini market. We mm -hmm. have all the functions that you need, a, a living room, a business center, only for residents. So it's a complete uh, self-contained condominium. And this is what really has uh, attracted a lot of people to see that this is really unique and iconic for Nairobi. Amazing. Let's talk about the recently launched land management system by the government. It's a digital platform that allows, you know, almost everyone to have a look and see exactly who is who owns what piece of land or who owns what property. How is that affecting the real estate sector? And could you give us some of your brief, um, you know, sentiments about it? So I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. It was certainly worth pushing. I was very much an advocate for it uh, from the very beginning. Um, I believe that uh, uh, any IT thing, uh, IT operation, always takes time. And if you can imagine, uh, within the lands office, they've got piles and piles and piles of files. And to digitalize all of those files is a huge exercise. And it's not, and I don't, I have a lot of sympathy for them because it's a really big exercise. <laughs> and without doubt, there will be mistakes. Without doubt, there'll be technical issues um, and things won't work out. But let's give them, let's give them time. <coughs> I'm not sure how long it, uh, that time will be. It may be many months uh, for them to iron out all the technical issues and to get the files all properly, uh, properly um, scanned and put into the digital system. But ultimately, mm -hmm. for us as Kenyans, it's going to be a great system and it will help reduce uh, duplication of documents, fake documents, and it will give a much clearer idea that if you come in to buy a product, it would be very easy to know whether that, is, that property uh, has been duplicated or not. Um, so it's a really good thing for Kenya. Amazing. Talk to us about the allocation of title deeds for apartment owners, particularly now that you are directly in this space. So there is uh, the new law come out that uh, mm. you, you can, uh, apartments, you can get uh, your own title deed for a, an apartment. So this is, this is, we're looking at this at the moment, how it will affect uh, the management company and how you run and manage the property. So we're in discussion with our lawyers at the moment how to practically make it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good, it's a very good way. Um, it's, it's a step further. Legally and uh, financially, there's no big difference. A big difference. It does give you more uh, security, mm -hmm. um, and it gives you a stronger say, particularly if the building falls down. Um, and uh, and insurance-wise, it's much better for an insurance point of view. So yes, there are some things that you we have to look into how management companies and how you manage the building afterwards. Uh, so we're looking into that, and and uh, every developer will come up with their own solution. Fair enough. As we bring this conversation to a close, Mr. Jackson, could you give um, just a brief snapshot of what you think the future of real estate will be like post-COVID-19? Um, that's a good question. When is post-COVID-19? <laughs> um, post-COVID-19 seems to be dragging on and dragging on. Okay. And so who knows where it's going to end up. I mean, for sure, 
uh, people will come back. Real estate is such a good asset. Mm. It has been for every country in the world and for many hundreds of years. You can't really go wrong with asset. Yes, it does go up, it does go down. It never crashes out completely. You never lose everything which you can do in other assets. Um, so it is a, a good long-term asset mm -hmm. and therefore people are still buying them and you know we are offering discounts at the moment for uh, one beds and studio apartments Ooh. and uh, so we're giving in fact actually this month we're giving a 15% discount on all studios and one beds so we are doing a special uh, program at the moment but this is a really good asset and and it gives you a really long term uh, security and uh, and good returns so are we possibly going to see Lordship Africa developing more affordable units we are looking and we would love to do uh, more affordable units. Okay. Um, I am trying to see how to get into that space. That's another discussion, Brian, but it's, uh, it's a very complicated one. But uh, yes, we would love to do that. Definitely, we'll want to have those difficult discussions right here on Business Today because this is where you get the best in the world of business. We have been speaking to Mr. Jonathan Jackson, who is the chair, for, chair of Lordship Africa, a real estate firm that is constructing the biggest residential 